Here's your word for the day from Calvary in Lake Havasu. Visit us on the web at calvaryaz.com. Well, hey, Calvary, thanks for tuning in for your word for the day today. It is great to have you here. We are continuing in our uh, study of the book of Matthew. We're going to be in chapter 16 if you want to follow along. But before we get there, I've got a question, and that is, uh, what are your goals? What's the goal of your life? Or maybe, you know, we are drawing to the end of 2023 and 2024 is upon us. And we have that season where we get to relearn how to write the year on every piece of paper that we fill out. But 2024 is almost upon us. And maybe you're thinking about, hey, what's going to be different this year? What, what are, are my priorities? What are my goals? What's going to be different? What do I want to accomplish? What do I want to avoid this year? I don't know where you're at with it, but what are your goals? Um, maybe you're thinking financial goals, career goals. Maybe you're thinking in terms of some bucket list items. Hey, I want to achieve this. I want to do that. Maybe you're, you're thinking, hey, I want to you know, experience this. And there's some travel. There's some experiential things. All those are great. But let me, want, let me ask you, um, where, where does your faith component uh, tie into that? What, where are your, your faith goals? Are they present in your planning for the future? Are, are there thoughts about how to draw closer to God, or is it just about what you can do and achieve here on this earth? Because we've got a passage of Scripture in Matthew 16 that's going to challenge us. Uh, hopefully, if you are open to the Holy Spirit in your life, we'll challenge you at a pretty deep level at this point and show us where we need to be placing our priorities. So let's take a look. Matthew 16, starting in verse 24. Jesus told his disciples, If anyone would come after me, let him deny himself and take up his cross and follow me. For whoever would save his life will lose it, but whoever loses his life for my sake will find it. For what will it profit a man if he gains the whole world and yet forfeits his soul? Or what shall a man give in return for his soul? For the Son of Man is, coming, is going to come with the angels in his glory of his Father, and will pay each person according to what he has done. Truly I say to you, there are some standing here who will not taste death until they see the Son of Man coming in his kingdom." And there are some, some statements in there that, that should stick with us, that should haunt us, that should really cause us to look at our life. Right off the bat, Jesus challenges us, if anyone would come after me, let him deny himself, take up his cross daily and follow me. He, he, he's saying, hey, the goal of your life is not to achieve all the things you want to do. The goal of your life is not comfort and, and getting a yes to every goal and ambition you have here. But then he leans in with what I call the, the truth sucker punch of, oh, that truth hurts. He says, what does it profit a man to gain the whole world and yet forfeit his soul? What does it gain for us to achieve everything with our financial goals? What, is it, what gain is it for us to gain every accomplishment and accolade in our career and vocation, to earn all the success and fame and accolades, to, to achieve every ambition and goal and bucket list item and travel to every destination we want, achieve everything if we are not investing in the eternity with our relationship with Jesus? Because he, he explains here that each of us will have to give an account for our life. That when we breathe our last here on earth, we'll stand before the God of the universe and give an account for how we spent every moment of our life. And I like to imagine that it's similar to a courtroom setting where we're standing before a holy and righteous judge and trying to plead for our case. And what will you use in that moment? We say, God, look at my bank account. Look at how successful I was financially. We say, God, look at my house. Look at how great this is. Look at what I achieved in life and all the things that fill that house. We say, God, look at this article that was written in a magazine or newspaper about me and my success. God, look at all the, the things that I did on earth to help people. Look at all the, the things I did for my family. God, look at all the awesome travel destinations I made it to. Because none of those matter in eternity. Or instead, will you say, God, look at the life that I spent trusting in your son Jesus and his salvation for me. Look at the ways I invested in my relationship with him and walked in faith every single day. Because that is the only thing that God will say, well done, my good and faithful servant, to in response. So let me challenge you, as you start thinking about 2023 winding down and a new year starting, let me challenge you to be thinking about how are you going to invest in your faith? 
How are you going to not gain the whole world and forfeit your soul, but instead gain everything in eternity, even if it means forfeiting some things here on earth? And I got three really simple things that if you're already doing, great. There's some ideas at the end, but if you're not, these are a starting place. And the first is to be reading your Bible. And I want to challenge you even more so, do that every single day. Do you know that out of uh, Christians that are surveyed in America, and I don't know how this applies to the rest of the world, but here in the United States of America, only 10% of, of Christians read their Bible every day. There's uh, almost 40% that don't read it at all. Like they just don't open the Bible at all. And so maybe that's you, or maybe you're in that about 15%. You're like, yeah, a couple times a month I pick it up. Let me challenge you in the start of the new year, start it now, uh, but read the, read the Bible every day. Uh, if you need some help with that, get on the YouVersion uh, Bible app. You can download reading plans. I love do, going through the New Testament in a year. It's uh, not a, a huge task. The Bible in a year is a little bit bigger of a commitment. If you're just starting, do the New Testament and get to know Jesus and spend time with him. The second thing is to pray every day. And you can do this together with your Bible reading. You can separate it out and have it at another time. But the way that you build relationship is by conversation. And the same is true of our relationship with God. And the third thing that I wanna challenge you with is to be more consistent with your church attendance. And I'm not just saying that because I'm a pastor. I'm not just saying that because I have some ulterior motive. I'm saying that because it's clear that that's God's design for us as his people. For over 2000 years, people have made corporate gathering in a church setting a priority to hear from God and his word declared and preached and explained to worship our savior in that, that group environment and to, to spend time in fellowship and conversation. But make that a priority. Uh, it, it, figure out where you're at in your attendance and say, how do I be more regular and more involved and engaged in that? And again, if you're already doing these things, maybe there's some other things for you. Maybe you need to, to begin fasting on a regular basis and combining that with your prayer life. Maybe you need to, to trust God with your finances and begin tithing consistently and faithfully and saying, hey, I'm gonna trust God at this point. Maybe there's an other area of your life that you need to align and say, hey, I don't, I don't really like this, but I'm gonna walk in obedience to your word and I'm gonna trust you at this point. But whatever it is, I wanna challenge you in 2024, start now, why wait? But in 2024, Invest in your relationship with God because what does it profit a man to gain the whole world and accomplish all his yearly goals and yet forfeit his soul? I don't want that for you. Instead, I want you to be greeted into eternity with well done, good and faithful servant. Have a great day, Calvary. We'll see you next time.